Hi, everybody. Welcome to our to our workshop tonight on on group coaching and leadership. And I'm going to be teaching you the nine stages of group coaching that I find really helpful for leading any group, any kind of group. It's a kind of universal, a universal setup. Now we've got some sound on the line. Um, Jeremy, you are here, correct? You can help with the settings. <laughs> and welcome everybody. Welcome Red and Emma and Akash and Azael and Jamie. I'm just I'm looking through at everybody. Let's all go to gallery view and just welcome each other here. We are gonna do this together. Hi, Mark, who's just in the other part hey. of the house. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome Jeffrey and Daryl and Tish and Marcella and I'm sorry if I don't say everyone's names, but I see all of you, Naomi, Amanda, Sarah Jane, Devin, Jeannie, Maria. I, I, I really do want to, I mean, gosh, okay, there's almost 150 people. I'm not going to be able to say everyone's names, but this is the first stage of leading a group. We welcome we welcome everyone in our group to be with us and we acknowledge that this is something having a group together whether it's in person or it's through zoom we are creating an energy together so it's really important as as a group coach as a leader to to take that time to really connect with your group now, um, I'm really fortunate in this setting to have um, an assistant here helping who is going to be helping with that sound of traffic and stuff that I heard. Yeah, we, um, we got that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. So if you don't know who we are, um, Mark, who is, is there on the screen too? Um, well, we're not both on, but we're both here. We, we created the Coaching Institute to train people in different forms of life coaching. And tonight's workshop is really focused on group coaching. And also tonight, well, for me, it's night. I wonder what time it is for you. Let's have everyone write into the chat where you are in the world. So, cause it might be morning, it might be afternoon. Awesome. And I see, we are worldwide, so welcome again. Um, so I'm going to be doing something I don't normally do. I'm going to be kind of doubling up. I need to be on two channels here. I need to teach you guys these nine stages and also actively lead you in a group. So um, be patient, please. I, I will be switching channels. So I'll be speaking to you as the, as the group coach, and then I'll be speaking to you from the perspective of training and teaching. So, so it's, you know, this isn't what I normally do. I do lead groups every day of the week, almost. Um, groups for learning coaching, meditation groups, parent groups, all kinds of groups. However, this uh, being on two channels is something that I'm still learning how to do. So um, I also have a slideshow for you that I'm going to start sharing right away. And I'm hoping that that works pretty well. And you guys can still see me and you can see the slide. Is that working? Do I get a thumbs up? Okay, cool. All right, so we're just going to dive into the content because there's a lot here and I'm going to try to keep this workshop to 75 minutes. I'm not going to try for an hour. That would be impossible, but 75 minutes. So um, we've already started with stage one, which is the welcome. And the welcome is really important. So as you welcome a group, whatever kind of group you're leading, you are creating a connection in yourself, but also as the leader, it's really your intentions, your presence, what you share is of course creating the tone, kind of the mood and the frequency of the group. So um, 
for each of these stages, I'm going to be sharing um, some, you can see all, all my slides are the same. We have a little bit about that stage. We have the skill the leader is, is using and learning for that stage and also some key words. So um, I wrote the key words kind of because for me, they're like a shortcut um, of what's really the most important. So more important than anything is in my view is the, the true feeling we bring as a leader. It's less important if we know what we're gonna say, <laughs> really not so important the mental stuff, really important that, that we are present and that we enjoy what we do, even if we're nervous. So um, I'm also hoping that in tonight's workshop, wherever you are at with your path as a leader, I am really, my intention is to help you to have more clarity, more purpose, and more support within yourself from your authentic true nature, supporting you in your role as a leader. I'm sure we have many, many different kinds of ways that we're all leaders. And maybe some of your group coaches, maybe some of you are leading in some, in some way in your community or in your family. So we will learn more together about each other now. But just, um, you know, some reminders for tonight, we are, we are going to keep, our, keep a container for our group. And so um, while we're all over the world, we can share an intention of being validating together, creating trust in this incredible format that allows us to connect and and also um what came through me right now as an intention is is an openness that that we all that we all feel on some level whatever level feels right for us so um if you were leading a group and, and using this model of nine stages, you might mention to your group some suggestions about confidentiality at this point, or you might have certain specific kind of rules for the group, like maybe no crosstalk. That's a really helpful group coaching kind of housekeeping um, policy to have. And crosstalk would mean if one group member shares, let's say they share that they're pretty upset right now because something has happened in their life you, the no crosstalk rule would mean that another group member isn't going to, at the first break, go up to that person and, and try to find out more or um, change their mind about something. And, and that makes it very safe to share in group. So whatever your policies are as a group leader, it's, it's a good idea to remind the group right there in the beginning. And this really um, helps to avoid issues um, that can pop up because everybody knows, okay, that's this group's policies. It, it creates a lot of safety for everyone. Um, and now what we're going to do is just take a moment to go inside. So here we've all dropped into this Zoom workshop from our busy lives. And it is time to connect with ourselves and with the energy that we are creating together here. So I invite you to close your eyes if you're comfortable doing so or have them softly open. And just take a few welcoming breaths. Welcome yourself right now into the moment with your own breathing, just breathing deeply fully. If there's any sighs or wiggles or anything that wants to happen with your body, just allow that. And just follow your breath in and follow your breath out. Notice how you are right now. Ask yourself, how, how, are, how are you? How am I? What do I feel? What's going on inside here? And just listen. 
Allow this connection with yourself, this dropping in. And if you notice any tension or area that is saying, you know, look at me, feel me, go there with your own attention and take a nice deep breath there, or maybe move your body or imagine something that you find really beautiful or soothing right there in that place that you notice any tension. This could be a walk on the beach or a sunrise or an animal you love or anything that brings you appreciation or gratitude. Imagine that and put it right there in your body where you feel any tension and allow your breath to deepen. From this place of connection with yourself, Expand out now, sensing the circle of friends here together, sensing the larger, the larger world, space, the universal sense of connection, whatever that, that word means for you expanding out, feeling that just through allowing this expansion, whatever expansion means, allow that sense of expansion, that atmosphere to fill you, to connect you with others. And as you breathe in, connect with yourself. And as you breathe out, allow that expansion, that wideness to go out in all directions. And let's just do that for a few seconds. And coming back to this time and place, opening our eyes and and hopefully, hopefully we all feel a little more aligned, a little more centered. So I'm going to go back to sharing the slides again. And notice we just did the energy connection practice. There's no one way of doing that practice. Um, you might, you might have a certain way you like to connect to center and that's the way you'll lead your groups. You can lead the same connection practice over and over and over again. And you know what, your groups will love it because when they have something that they're counting on experiencing with you, it is very helpful. It helps, it helps to, um, to soothe the nervous system. It helps to, to kind of know this is, this is what being in group is like, I get centered, I, I drop in first, I expand out, or whatever the process is that you use. But this kind of ritual is really, really good for groups to experience together. So um, as a leader, when you do this practice, there may be a kind of invisible support network that you are tapping into. So that invisible support network might be, um, for, for one person, that might be their values. So they tap into their sense of compassion or their sense of adventure. Or for someone else, it might be um, angels. For someone else, it might be an animal helper or a guide. Um, for someone else, it might be their faith. No one way to do that, but just know that during that practice time, you as the leader are also becoming more, I don't know what the right word is, energized and kind of bringing your leadership superpowers, for lack of a better word, into, into the moment. 
And, and groups do that for us. When we lead groups, often one of the things that's happening is um, we are kind of looking for the right words here. We sort of get a tune up. It's like, um, it's like uh, whatever, wherever we think we're at, we might think we don't know enough or we might think gosh i've had a hard day or my kids are just whatever and then we go into that group setting and our system kind of tunes in to the needs of the participants and we become more than just our ordinary self so that practice time is a time to really allow that to happen um now this next stage we're going to do together and that is intention setting so my intention for tonight is to just be of service however that shows up here and um yeah on a very kind of practical content level it's to help you tune in to a kind of purpose as a leader and I would love it if everyone just wrote their intention in the chat for themselves. It can be an intention about being here in this community learning. It can be a general intention you have, but just what, what are you intending to create in yourself right now? Be present and curious, beautiful, gain clarity, connect and grow learn to better help serve, love, a new pathway, learning, growing, insight, expansion. Wow, okay, so many, so many great intentions. And as we read each other's intentions, let's just honor for a minute how, how powerful it is to be in this kind of community right now. Um, one thing that I find in groups, all of, our, all of our intentions come together to support us. Okay, beautiful. In a word, love. Wonderful. Inner wisdom. Inspiration. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful shares of intentions. Hi from Holland. Hi, Rosie. <laughs> okay, awesome. So when leading a group as a group leader if you were in a group of people in person you might ask each member let's say you have 15 people in your group you might have your group split into two smaller groups or you might take the time for each person to go around the circle and share their intentions for that that time together it is really again another very powerful process practice that when people come into their, their group coaching environment, at first it can feel awkward to just share for like one or two minutes. But when people get the hang of, of being in that environment of safety, where they, they will not be questioned, they can just share their truth for a minute, what's going on for them or what their intention is for that, that session or that day or for their life right now. It's so helpful. I think we all get how right now in the world, people need people, people need support, they need community. And having a community where in a safe group, people can just share that way for a minute or two is really valuable. So you can do this on Zoom. Um, you can make, you can make like, if, if we didn't have almost 300 people I, I would have split you into, into smaller groups of maybe four people to each be able to share for a minute or two. And then we come back into the bigger group. So this is, you know, it's so wonderful now how we can use Zoom and we have this ability to go into breakout rooms and then come back together. And the same thing can happen in a cafe or, you know, in a, in a classroom, wherever you're leading a group you can have people turn to each other and share and then come back into the circle as well or go all in a circle and you might pass around a, a rock or a, you know, a talking stick or something that lets the person feel like, okay, it's my turn. Now, as a leader, you do need to sometimes pace people. So you may need to, to um, make it really clear. We're going to all share for just one minute. When the timer goes off, we pass the, 
the rock or whatever it is to the next person. Key words for this stage, stage three, are sincere, authentic, and inclusive. So when you share your intentions as a leader and you share your real intentions, let's say you really had a bad day and you're going to say, guys, just so you know, I, I came off the highway, there was an accident and boy, I'm spinning right now. That's good. You don't have to be different than you are when you're a leader. And when we're authentic and honest with our group, it creates the atmosphere of trust and openness. So everyone feels they can share. And this is really different than being like a motivational speaker who's only going to present a certain story about themselves and really only wants an audience to experience them in a certain way. Um, I mean, there may be, of course, there are leadership styles like that. I, I personally um, don't feel good about that. I, I personally feel that part of, of great leadership is to be really authentic. So um, that doesn't mean like going into a long drawn out complaint to your group as a leader, but it means being real. So of course we're going to, as a leader, filter a bit. I, so I, I don't wanna, I don't want that to come across like I'm saying to complain, but it's also good to just be really honest. Um, I think that the most important, I guess, vow I made to myself when I started leading groups about eight years ago was to never lie. I just decided the only way I could really step into my own truth as a leader would be to tell the truth. <laughs> and whatever someone asked me, if I didn't know the answer, I'd, I wasn't going to make something up. I would let them know I didn't know the answer. And that was an enormous relaxation for me. It really helped me to, to be able to get over a lot of nerves that, that knowing that honesty could be an ally. And we're going to be doing a little bit of that in our next um, stage. So our next stage is introducing the topic or process. And one thing I want to point out here, here we are on stage four, and I don't know what time it is, but, um, but I'm going to check. Okay. It's been 20 it's minutes. 20. Yeah. <laughs> so we've gone through, we've gone through three stages already, and that's me being on two channels, right? Normally we'd be about 15 minutes into group. So time, time is important when you're leading a group. You do need to pace yourself. You do need to be aware of what's happening or time can kind of get away from us in a sense. And, um, and we won't be able to get to the content we want to present for a group. So one of the ways that at Coaching Institute, we teach group coaching that's a little different is that our group processes are, are courses in a sense that we certify people in are not groups that are only support groups. So while I think support groups are fabulous and we want to have support within our group coaching, what I have found really works the best is to have in the middle, so we're starting this part right now of the nine stages, to have a topic, a process, exercises, an experiential kind of learning that the group does together. And so one of the cool things about that is that let's say um, there's a group and nobody knows each other, they're all new to each other, and there might be someone who's in their 60s, and there might be someone who's in their 20s. And as they do an experiential process together, they hear each other's discoveries. They might do partner work together. They might, they might write something and share it with the group. And the discoveries that happen for the individuals kind of grow and get shared and amplified by the other group members. So I've led groups where um, just by chance, Someone who is like the mom of a 20 year old gets partnered with a 20 year old. And as they do a process together, the two of them really create insight for each other. Or the same thing that will happen when, when working with a group of women and there's a kind of commonality, there's a sharing of truth that they maybe hadn't expected to experience in that group exercise, but it's that sort of, um, 
spontaneous sharing of truth and connection and insight that just becomes more contagious in, in a group. And that is what so often we see can be more powerful about group coaching than individual coaching. Now, I think they go really well together. So I am not putting down individual coaching here. It's just that there are, there are groups that do seem to create even more growth quickly than individual coaching. And they can go really well together. So you will find as a group coach leader, often many of your participants will sign up for private coaching. It's really common that a potential client will want to experience their coach in a leadership role before they sign up. Um, I think we get to know our leaders in a different way and then sort of feel comfortable with them where sometimes it can be a little scary to sign up for like a one-on-one -on -one session with someone you don't know yet. So that's just kind of how we are as human beings. I know I've had that with people I go to as, as group leaders. Okay, so he, here I am and I'm like, all right, what is the stage? I already forgot, okay. And that's why it's okay to have notes. It's okay. It's great to have notes. Everyone loves to have notes. We don't have to remember everything. So my notes to myself about the topic are there at the bottom. Experiencing our leadership purpose, values, emotions, timing, presence, and activation. So I got to figure out now what I meant by that. Now, I wouldn't be saying this if this was really a group I was leading. I'd be a little more with it there. Um, okay. So all of us are at some stage of our leadership journey. And I think it is incredibly important to step into leadership of any kind with powerful and clear purpose. So that does not mean knowing something. It's more about feeling and aligning with our truth and our values. So I am wondering right now if, um, if you guys are willing to do an experiential process with me and we will, I got, I got a little nod there. Yeah, I saw Jamie nodding. Cool. And I'm going to go to gallery view so I can see everybody. So let's begin our process. Oh, hi, Gabriella. Um, <laughs> let's begin our process with our values. Okay. Oh, and I see you too, Pauline. Haven't seen you for a while. She's a group coach. Um, <laughs> so let's begin with our values as, as leaders, when in your life have you been in, in leadership in some way? Maybe as a parent, maybe, um, maybe in fourth grade, maybe you had to do a project with a group in college, I don't know. In a, in a yoga class, you, you had to do some, some kind of leadership. It could be in any part of life. But just imagine, just bring that part of your life or that past memory and, and notice, notice it. And I'm seeing a lot of people share. That's awesome. Music director, a team I led, university, as a parent, as a manager, as a leadership coach, as a teacher in my work so many times, as a minister, as an activist. Okay, awesome. And maybe, maybe for some of you, it's kind of hard to find. I don't know, when have I been a leader? But there is some reason you're interested in this, in this aspect of life, of leadership. So if looking back, do you think there was any value or emotion that supported you? You know, this is a funny one I'm gonna share. I remember an emotion that supported me that you wouldn't think would be in a supportive emotion because it's not a very great emotion, frustration. <laughs> I can remember over and over again being in groups where I just felt, man, no one is stepping up here to organize this thing. It might have been a group of parents as we were trying to create a nursery school or just in different, in different places in Ayurvedic training. And it was just like, 
Ooh, you know, and it wasn't like an angry frustration, but it was a kind of like, okay, got to get this, got to kind of get this together, get this moving. And so I don't know what that value is, <laughs> but it definitely propelled me forward. So it could be love. It could be just a desire to make things a little better for a couple people. Um, curiosity, great. Service, a sense of community, yes. So, so many wonderful emotions and values being shared here. Progress, fear pushed me into action and momentum. Thank you for sharing that, Liz. I love that. Um, I don't know how, how often you'll probably hear that, like that kind of truthful statement. And, and I think it is incredible how sometimes acknowledging our fear or our hurt or whatever it is, and knowing that and allowing that to propel us forward as leaders is, is really important. So, um, talking about fear. Any of you, any of you feel fear when you, um, when you think of leadership a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. I can relate. So you might've heard me say this already, but I, I used to teach with my eyes closed before zoom, when we gave, um, teleseminar classes and I started about 10 years ago, my eyes would be closed the entire time I was teaching and my hand would be on my heart. <laughs> it was, it was sweet looking back on it, but my eyes were closed because I really needed them to be closed. I would also get so scared that I would put on two down jackets because my teeth would be rattling. But that only happened for a couple of months and then I didn't need the down jackets anymore. And, and also eventually, maybe a year, I started opening my eyes. Well, it was actually the first live workshop I had to give, I couldn't have my eyes closed. So it is, fear is okay as a leader. We do not have to be super people who are just outgoing and like you can be a really introverted leader. You can be shy and still want to be a leader. And, and I find sometimes the reluctant leaders, the leaders who are a little more quiet can make the most powerful leaders because they have a really deep form of empathy and, and they, um, well, they have less ego and that, then that can be really useful as a leader. So um, let's, let's all pick three values now that we identify as support for our, for our leadership. Three values. Values can also kind of be emotions. It might be humor, trust, curiosity, courage, sharing, anything, anything works here. So just come up with your top three. Love, honor, duty, and yeah, and, and emotions are great and values also could be, um, uh, help me out. Okay. Your, your words are the best here. Integrity, courage, respect, planting and nurturing. Love it. Yes. And we share a lot of common values here. You can see that in this community, justice, openness. Yeah. You know, one of mine for, for a very long time now, our values and our emotions that support us can change over time, right? So um, for a long time, mine was uh, joy and laughter. I really wanted to experience joy and laughter in every coaching session and every group session. And, and also, um, well, there was another kind of interesting one that came and went, but I'm gonna keep reading yours. Empathy, courage, compassion, hope, faith, awesome. Oh, I know the funny one relaxation. For a long time, my big focus, that's why I started the meditation group, was I really wanted to promote in myself and in others, just relaxation, whatever that brought, I knew it would be a kind of nectar, it would be, it would be of service to, to promote the ability to relax, um, and to accept to allow. So our values and the emotions that we prioritize are like, are like a, a, an anchor for us. They're like a North star. They're a guiding principle. And right now, as part of our experiential part of group tonight, 
let's take our three values and let's, let's take them inside. So just take a moment, don't look at the screen anymore, close your eyes or look away from the screen. And let's start by, by bringing attention to our hands. Move your hands, however feels right. Say hello to your hands and open your hands and invite those values to kind of be felt in your hands as though you're just holding them, holding these precious, precious jewels of values and emotions that serve you in your purpose as a leader. So you're, if you're more visual, you might kind of see something when you think of your values or your emotions. If you're more kinesthetic, you might kind of feel into the way that value or that emotion feels as, a, as an energy or kind of a pattern or a substance in a sense. It might feel loose. It might feel, it might feel um, wiggly. It might feel um, electric. Uh, if you're auditory or you just want to, you might kind of hear what is, the, what is the voice of that emotion or that value. So just tune in and, and, and let your senses give you information about each value. Like curiosity might jump up and down with excitement. And when you're ready at your own pace, take your hands, imagine holding one value at a time and bring it into the body, into your body, maybe into your heart, maybe into your belly or your arms or your legs or your face, just wherever it feels right or all over, maybe kind of like a a massage of your, of your aura, just bringing in those values, those emotions that serve you. And, and knowing that you can really integrate this with your whole somatic experience, letting your breath assist you. All right, awesome. Wherever you're at, just open your eyes now and I'm gonna ask you an important question. Did anyone have any resistance? Because our next phase is to, is to work with any resistance that shows up when we align with our values or our purpose. Okay, I got one yes. So um, let's just, for the sake of learning, let's just imagine we had resistance. Let's imagine that um, what's a common resistance oh, but I'm not ready for that. Like, yes, I love this value of love, of courage, of integrity. Great. I feel it. Oh yeah, I feel it. And I'm not ready. And so it can sound like a voice saying I'm not good enough. It can, it can feel like a, a no inside, like a shutting down. Um, resistance can, can just be like a sort of, eh, not, not really, mm, not sure, not sure just not sure, like a doubting, it can feel itchy, <laughs> what, whatever it is for you. Um, but just for the sake of learning, let's just imagine a, a resistance you might encounter, maybe that you encounter in other parts of your life and, and tenderly hold that resistance. So, and imagine it becoming something like a metaphor, like a, a puppy, or um, for some reason, I thought of like a mouth guard. Um, but whatever resistance could be, it could be anything, a house, a very little house, but something small enough that you can just hold resistance in your hands, okay? And with your imagination, whatever your resistance showed up as metaphorically, let's see if anyone can type. You've got to drop, drop your hands to type for a second. Give me some examples of how you could imagine your resistance. If it's, if it's a voice, let it take the, a form. A shoe, I love it. An airplane, great. A suitcase, a pebble, a question mark, a prickly cactus, <laughs> great. A rope, a goat, a spouse. Okay, these are great. An untamed kitten. All right, I love it. Um, okay, so whatever that resistance is, now you're using your imagination. This is great. 
and you're working with resistance, transform it. If it's an untamed kitten, how do you make it a sweet kitten? Just imagine that. If it's um, a shoe, do you wanna give the shoe wings? Do you wanna change the shoe's color? And this is just to bring flexibility and play into our experience of resistance. So we're loosening it up. We're using our imagination to loosen up, to relax and kind of unwind a resistance with a metaphor. If it sounds a certain way, like it's a, oh, make it lighter. Ah, uh, you know, do whatever. You don't want me to sing for you, but I, I use my voice a lot to work with resistance. So, so if it's a holding of breath, take a deep breath in. Some, some people are visual when they imagine and some people use other senses. So I wanna to talk to everybody right now. Okay, a guy I wanna fight. Okay, so how do you make the guy you wanna fight someone you wanna be friends with? Give him something lovable. Because when we're working to transform our, our resistance, we're not going to fight it. We've already been fighting it. You know what? We've been losing the battle with our own obstacles and resistance our whole life. It doesn't work to fight it. So this is a time to heal it, to transform it. Okay, love it. Rub the kit kitten's belly, spouse not pushing, but locked arms and walking with me. I loved it. An untamed Rottweiler. Okay, what are you gonna do with that Rottweiler? Make it your friend. Just imagine making it a little friendlier. All right, so take a moment to do this now on your own. And if you're auditory tactile and not visual, use that, that is powerful. Let's say you felt a prickly um, tension, that was your resistance. Use your hands, use your experience to bring a sense of smoothness or a flow or another temperature coolness. Let's say you're auditory and you hear it as a voice. Make that voice slow down or speed up. Tell that voice, I hear you. I'm listening. That's a change, right? So we don't have to imagine with our visual sense. We can imagine with all of, with any of our senses, all our senses are equally powerful. And it's really cool to learn to translate between the senses. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm witnessing beautiful, beautiful changes here, right, right in the text message. Um, so to, now I'm gonna change channels a second and talk to you about what stage we're at. So we are in stage four. Uh, well, actually we, we skipped ahead. We, we talked about that, but now we were just doing the process. So we, we experienced our values and emotions. We brought them into our body. We noticed if there was any obstacle or resistance, we worked with transforming that. Now, if we were in like what I like to have groups that are less than 30 people, ideally, then the group coach can work individually with people with the group support. So a few, a few minutes of talking about their resistance and helping them to transform that. Or the group leader can have everyone break into subgroups and share what their experience was. And as you hear different people's values and different people's transformation, it might be just one person, it really assists the group in the learning and in having that experience. So um, it is important that everyone feels that, that their experience is just right so that they're validated. We don't want anyone in, in, in a group coaching environment to feel shamed or that they're not enough in some way, they get enough of that in their regular life. So this is not, what I'm talking about as group coaching is not any kind of um, pushy transformation work that tells the person they are not enough and that they have to buy into some system of being. Um, I, I really hope if you walk away with just one thing tonight, it's just validation, group coaching, it's great to validate my group 
everyone has wisdom. Everyone has truth. Everyone has important values. Our values are never better than someone else's. So when we, when we create that inclusion, it, it, of, it of course makes our participants trust themselves more, step into their own healthy power. So as a group leader, one of the things you'll be finding is that you start to feel more energy. Um, I am wondering if any of you have in a teaching environment or a leadership environment felt a different kind of energy in yourself. <laughs> I saw Red's hands. <laughs> yes. Um, yep. Okay. I'm getting some yeses there and I'm going to look at everybody now. Yeah. So, so what is that? What is that? Just remember that energy you felt. Just remember that energy of, of leadership for a moment. Because that, that is what you want to connect to as you deepen your, your path as a leader. And, and it is that energy that can really empower your values and your supportive emotions to, to go deeper. So, um, and yeah, it can be a sense of motivation whatever motivation means for you or inspiration or wonder or like, oh my gosh, things are so mysterious. That's one thing I have often felt is like, I just never know. I never know what someone is going to share that changes things for me. Um, and that mystery is, is that unknown um, becomes very exciting instead of being fear inducing. So um, stage six, we share discoveries. So we want to, um, and I was already talking about that. These stages can kind of move very, they flow right into each other. But the nice thing when you have an outline, when you know what the stages are, you don't skip something important. Even if it's just everyone now turn for two minutes and share what discovery you just made or who in the group wants to share a discovery. So right now I'm going to model that. Um, please write, if you had a discovery about your metaphor or about your value or about a past memory as a leader, write it in the chat. We, we want your discoveries here. I mean, I saw some there. I saw the, I remember the one of the cactus transforming the kitty cat. You know, that's the great thing about metaphors. They quickly give us well, they give us a knowledge that we can transform things. Lion, confidence, growth, feeling lighter than air, beautiful flowers. So, you know, these are metaphorical transformations. Amazon, self-trust. I discovered that I am energized when people feel validated, awesome. Oh, that I'm a leader more often than I realized, natural power. It reminded me to bring the fun. Beautiful, beautiful shares. All right. Um, I, I'm aware of the time. Wonderful time. Time is on our side, though. So our next stage after sharing of discoveries is, um, and of course, in, in this format with so many people here, I'm going through these stages very quickly. That discovery time is very important because um, we are integrating a discovery when we share it with others. So there is a real integration and a deepening of that discovery when it is witnessed and when we give it words, we give it voice, we give it reality through telling others about it. So commitment setting. Um, and you know, it's funny for, you know, uh, as a leader, we can change, we can change the order of things. So I'm skipping ahead to stage eight, and then we're going to go back to stage seven. So I'm, I'm, I'm going forward. Um, so stage eight is closing the session with a guided experience. I want to do the guided experience before we set commitments tonight. So you've got freedom to move around these stages a bit. So um, let's just take a moment to have a little experience together. Closing your eyes, going inward or soft focus with your eyes. 
Again, bring that sense of your values and your emotional helpers into your experience right now. You had been holding them in your hand. You may want to use your hands. Or you may want to imagine them surrounding you. Allow them to take the form of something wonderful and supportive. For me, it's usually lovely boulders all around me like Stonehenge. And maybe your three values will become six values or <laughs> your emotions will take on new shapes or forms. They'll be flowers or maybe you'll you'll just feel them. You don't have to see or hear, you just feel them. But imagine now, however you sense this, that these values are in a circle around you. And as you breathe in, you allow each value to honor you and support you. And you feel your openness. Perhaps there is something in your life right now that you want to lead in, that you want to step forward in a new way. And you invite the values now, the emotions that support you to give you what you need to take that step in your life today. It might be, it might be something for yourself. It might be self-care. It might be something for others. It might be something in career or in health or in creativity, whatever it is. Invite your values, invite your, your empowering emotions into your life right now, just by bringing in, we do this so simply, just by bringing in that intention. Values support this part of me. Values support this way that I'm showing up in the world, this way that I'm showing up for myself right now. And when you're ready, take some notes for yourself. Take some notes of what you, what you gained, what you learned there from your values. And we will go back, back a step to stage seven, commitment setting. So this is for each of us to do tonight, today. Create a commitment for yourself for this week that honors you, honors those values, those emotions, something, something maybe, maybe you want to take a minute each day to feel into your own sense of purpose. Maybe you want to take a walk with one of your empowering emotions and just focus on it or bring in memories. Maybe there's something else that shows up for you as a commitment. But take, take a few minutes now to, to write this down for yourself. If we were in a smaller group, I would have, um, I would, I would have people have partners that they can turn to and if they wish and share their commitment or hear each other's that witnessing and the leadership skill here is is a real trust in your in your group that each person will will find an empowering commitment for themselves. You don't have to give it to them. You don't you don't have to the nice thing about being a group coach is you really you don't have to work that hard. The group has their strengths. The individuals have their purpose. They have their deep truth. So you're making space and you're creating experiences that allow each person's truth to be experienced and shared. And, and so it's relaxing. It's not, um, it doesn't feel like work. It might at the beginning, but after a while it, it feels relaxing because you're also being supported when you're a leader. You're also part of that group. You are not separate from the group. 
So we did the, the guided experience that usually I do at the end to close a group. I did a little early tonight because I trusted my own intuition with that. Now stage nine is social time. So um, we can do social time with our groups in different ways. In a live group, you might, you might uh, bring tea and snacks and, and just invite everyone to mingle for a while. Remember pre-COVID times, so that um, it will be like that again. Um, and it is already in some places. Um, in Zoom, you can, uh, you can, if you have 30 people, you can divide up into like six groups of five for that social time. Um, you've seen, maybe some of you have been at meditation group where, where I, do, I do a little more structured social time because people don't know each other so well because it's a large group. So we will do like topic-based social time where everyone shares through soul talks. So you can give a little more form to your social time or you can have it very open. Um, if this is up to you as a leader, some leaders want to stay and enjoy social time. I was part of a wonderful group for many years where after our formal group, we sat around um, the leader's kitchen table and drank tea and everyone just talked. And that was my favorite part of the group. So I, I went once or twice a week to that group. Um, so it's, it's one of the beautiful, beautiful things that you are giving to your groups is connection and friendship. So in today's world, I mean, maybe I think it's always been like this, actually. A funny thing seems to happen after a certain age. I mean, when you're younger, there are more kind of group activities that lead to friendship making, right? Once people kind of, you know, develop their life, it's, it's a little more structured. You have to actually seek out groups. And oftentimes what people are feeling they're missing in their life is connection. At the heart of it, it's connection. And so when we create groups that we offer, we are creating a venue, a space, whether it's online or in person, for friendship as well as discovery and growth. And that friendship is essential. So um, of course there can be sometimes policies you need to make um, about the group's friendship practices. Um, but in general, I think that friendship is such an advantage. So um, can't overemphasize that. Well, wow, okay, we got all that in in an hour. So any questions, um, please write them into the chat. And I am going to share with you guys about our group coach leader program that we are, we are opening for enrollment this week. We're open for about nine days. And um, we, do, we do train people at Coaching Institute in, in a different way of using these nine stages, leading groups, and we've made some changes. So we used to um, train people in, how do I put, in, in, in all the strategies. It was like giving everyone a huge, huge buffet in a sense. What I learned after a couple years of training leaders is that people like to have about four to eight coaching group coaching sessions, kind of like a course that they can offer. That has worked better for coaches to enroll participants into their groups. So honoring what we see that is working, we have changed the program to have four specialties, like four specific focuses so that our group coach leaders can get certified in each specialty. And it's much faster because you're only getting certified in eight sessions and you know a lot of places will train leaders through skill building which we totally believe in but where we're a little different is we actually give you the session strategy plans the guides all the details you need to lead groups so that's 
like kind of something different about, about us at Coaching Institute. We, we view our success really in terms of the success of our coaching students. So when people graduate and they do enroll clients, they do lead groups, that means that, well, that gives us great joy. So we want you to have, we want you to have the tools to make your own content, to make your own, your own specialty courses, absolutely. And we do do that, but we also want to just give you the material so you can within um, like four or six weeks, you can start leading your first, uh, your first course as a group coach.